welcome back to the class today we will start our cognitive portion behavioral and cognitive methods so today we will give a general discussion what are the varieties of we are present through which we can uh, measure and analyze the behavioral and cognitive methods so let us first start with the definition of cognitive ergonomics Cognitive ergonomics is concerned with the mental process. Okay, so whenever we are talking about any ergonomics analysis which is connected with our mental uh, process, how do we perceive? How do we think? How do we act upon on the you know responses that we are receiving? So all the mental process such as perception, memory, reasoning, and uh, no motor responses so connected motor responses as they affect the interaction among human and other elements of the system so cognitive ergonomics mainly deal with mental workload decision making skilled performance very important aspect is skilled performance okay whenever we uh, start any ergonomics intervention you must have seen if there is some activity which is connected to skill you know uh, craftsmanship anything which needs high level of uh, you know skilled thing then it, it becomes very difficult for us to go for ergonomics physical intervention so those cases we need to really look into uh, from the cognitive ergonomics perspective human computer interaction definitely human reliability so we will be talking about you know um, all kinds of how reliable the interaction happened between the man machine and within the and particular environment and of course work stress and training so these all are the topics normally we try to cover uh, within the purview of cognitive ergonomics. However, these are not only the things we may have some, we may coin some other terminology as well because uh, these are something which we commonly use. Apart from that, we can coin many other terminology which we can include in cognitive ergonomics if we follow the definition of it. So, remembering the uh, elements of this particular uh, cognitive ergonomics, one is perception, second is memory and reasoning. These three components are very, very important when we talk about cognitive ergonomics. Now, these three components, how they are connected with our motor responses, okay. So, suppose we are looking at a particular object and uh, suppose a red, it is a very common example that we try to give in when we start the cognitive ergonomics, this particular area of study. If we see a red light, definitely we know there is a danger or there is need to stop. How do we uh, take that decision? How do we assess that yes, we need to stop? Because it is a reasoning that we do. So, we have a perception about the red color uh, from our learning, from our memory and we do a action against that particular response received from that. So, Whenever we are talking about cognitive ergonomics, this perception, memory, reasoning are very much important. And this mental workload, decision making, skill performance, human computer interaction, human reliability and work stress and training are the major component that we normally talk about when we try to go for cognitive ergonomics. Apart from that, definitely we can coin many other terminology. So, for this whole uh, exercise uh, related to as we did in physical that you know various tools, techniques we try to understand, learn and practice. Here also for cognitive ergonomics what we will do? We will try to first classify. Okay, classification of behavioral and cognitive methods. So, major classification we will try to do in steps and for each classification, what we will do, we will learn majorly available techniques. I will not say that we will be able to cover all and everything, whatever is available because it is a you know, uh, time span is uh, restricted. So, what we will do, whatever 
possible and whatever easy to discuss in this particular platform we will do and definitely interest is commonly used or majorly used tools and techniques okay so first what we try to do is general analysis method under that we have several techniques then we have cognitive task analysis method it's a major area that we definitely need to work uh, whenever we go for behavioral and cognitive ergonomics then error analysis which is also important aspect when we talk about production productivity and all those things workload and situation analysis method this is an area where we really need to put an attention or give an attention and we need to do lot of intervention when we try to do something in the system level at the system level okay so when we are trying to improve something from the system level this particular uh, aspect is very very important of course lat uh, at the end we'll try to conclude or summarize the whole topic so in general analysis method we will try to focus mainly on the observation interview verbal protocol repertory grid and focus group each one we will be discussing in separate section today i will give the brief of them okay then in under cognitive task analysis hierarchical task analysis commonly we know uh, call it as hta uh, cognitive allocation of functional methodology critical decision method applied cognitive work analysis okay so all techniques we will be learning separately under in uh, see it's not only this much we may have some more techniques available however these are the common techniques so we'll be discussing these okay apart from that also some some more available you would based on your research interest based on your study interest definitely you can find them out a uh, third we will be discussing on the error analysis method in error analysis we will go for systemic human error reduction and prediction approach so this uh, in short we call it sherpa so this particular technique we will be learning and we will be practicing so for all uh, tools and technique as we did in physical ergonomics everybody should practice everybody should collect their own data and in the discussion section uh, maybe we can discuss it then task analysis for error identification so this is also very important when we talk about the productivity next part will be the workload and situational analysis method in this particular sector we will go for multiple resources time sharing model it's a model through which we will try to visualize or try to see our system uh, multimodal critical path analysis and situational awareness global assessment technique this situational awareness global assessment technique again it's it's very very important when we talk at the system level so let us start slowly with the general analysis so this is the schematic uh, representation how do we divide them and uh, you know in a broad classification so if we try to classify them so it is mainly the it starts with the general analysis then cognitive task method error analysis workload and situation analysis here i would like to mention one thing it's not that each uh, uh, component are important for every research okay so depending on the requirement depending on the uh, type of objectives you have you can definitely pick one you can pick two or you can follow all four so it's not mandatory that you should go in a sequence like this however whenever we start any kind of intervention it starts with general analysis method because it gives a direction to you whereas cognitive task analysis uh, method also if you start with that maybe you have a 
prior study or some kind of pilot study from where you have a lead and you can start directly from the cognitive task analysis. But it, it is it is nowhere restricted that you cannot start with you know workload and situational analysis method because if you have a lead that it is the requirement of your study you can definitely start with it okay but it's it's a baby step that we try to always take we start with general then go for the uh, cognitive task analysis error analysis and the situational um, workload and situational if it is in the same way if you want to conclude it in a uh, detailed manner however it is not mandatory okay so under general analysis method uh, as i mentioned earlier we have observation interviews verbal protocol repertory grid and focus group these are majorly used today we will give short description in the next class i will take you for each with example okay so in observation what it is if we talk about observation so the core approaches in the in this uh, is the ergonomist toolkit so it's a very basic uh, we, if we talk about the observation and for each and every study if you talk about cognitive or uh, ergonomics or physical ergonomics this observational technique from both perspective is very very important okay so these approaches feed data into many methods like whatever uh, information we are uh, getting from this particular um, study or particular method what will happen the interpretation of this uh, part of your study can be the input of many other process many other techniques especially when we talk about hierarchical task analysis from the data received from the observational uh, observation you can take input from there and give uh, start with your hierarchical task analysis same thing will happen with the cognitive task analysis verbal protocol and human error identification methodologies okay so the main three main ways to collect uh, the observational data is the uh, direct observe first is direct observation indirect observation and participant observation these all three varieties we will be describing in detail in next class so observational data can take in many form okay so uh, depending on the type of objectives type of uh, you know, research interest we have we can have the um, uh, how do we collect the information from the observation one is time and error data so for each and every element of your activity we can use you can collect the time data okay how much time it is taken how the person who is working is spending time what is the uh, uh, no activity time taken so all these are possible also it is possible to collect the error data so in a particular given task how many errors are happening so that is also possible to collect information from the observational technique next is description and frequencies of activity so whenever we are observing a particular task in detail what happens the first is important is the description of the study so that description can help you to get a to make a blueprint of the whole work okay so this description actually will give you a detailed analysis detailed understanding where the cognitive obstruction or load or you know um, uh, which further tool you can use to identify them all these thing is possible only in the if you are getting your data in the descriptive format also frequency of activities frequency of activities means how frequently you are performing that particular task then definitely verbatim protocol will be doing this and behavioral narratives here also we will be describing the process in detail next as i mentioned after observation within general we have observation second very important tool that we 
frequently used in the field of design, in the field of you know, industrial ergonomics, uh, occupational health and many other cases is the interview. Now this interview can have three major type or three major component ok. So one will be the completely unstructured the interview many of us definitely used it in our um, research life that uh, some interviews are completely unstructured. We will discuss what it is, what should be the assumption of the completely unstructured interview, how do we analyze it in further uh, semi structure and completely structure. So, what exactly it means a structured a structure of questioning is proposed as starting with open question. After the open questioning, the probing questions are always asked. This is the way how do we go ahead. At the end, a closed question finish particular interview. These steps are necessary. Okay. So, starting and ending. So, apart from that, whatever information are getting collected may not be considered as a part of data collection of interview. So, from where you are starting, so the first question of your interview is very important as well as the ending question or ending remarks are very, very important. So, when we are talking about completely unstructured, it is a random questions are asked depending on the discussion. Semi structure, there will be some agenda, some uh, questions which will follow particular agenda, but it may deviate from the path that follow some interesting line of query. Okay. So, uh, it, it's not very, uh, very much structured, not a single, single questions. It's not like that. What will happen? We will, we will have some agenda points and from that agenda point all questions will follow those agenda point. However, there may be a deviation from uh, in the discussion in the in the, in the in the question answering session depending on the interest ok. Depending what are the inquiries are coming depending on that we may divert uh, uh, a little bit. So, how to gather information from such cases or where we can use such you know tool for collecting information that is very important for us to know and we will be discussing it in detail. Third is definitely a complete structured. So, by nomenclature itself we can understand what do we mean by completely structured. So, it is a verbal questionnaire with recording ok. So, you have certain sets of info or no questions and you are going to ask only those questions. It's so starting question, second question, third question, all questions are set and you have definite answer for that. Okay. So, that is completely structured question. So, we will be discussing all these in detail where and how we should use this tool to gather information. Now, next after questionnaire interview then another tool is very very important and useful tool is verbal protocol. So, the data from the verbal protocol uh, or verbal transcript analyzed in the content ok. So, whatever we are getting information we go for the content analysis uh, whatever uh, content we are generating from this. So, the transcript data come from this protocol gathered from live recording performance of that particular task. So, we do a recording and then what we do we come back to the um, laboratory and try to develop the content whatever was there in the whole uh, period and try to uh, uh, know, collect those information. So, the transcript can be coded and analyzed at various level of details from participants uh, word to phrases. So, it absolutely depend at what level at, at which degree you want to analyze them. Depending on the objectives, depending on the uh, uh, area that you would, would like to explore, this verbal protocol detailing can be done. Okay? So, it is absolutely based on the researcher's interest. Then, repertory grid 
it's again a very what can i say it's a very important and useful tool okay um we use definitely in the field of design in the field of occupational health industrial engineering especially when we are about to start something very new and we need information so those cases this this tool is very very important so it what it is a method used to elicit personal construct from the people okay which is very important when we talk about cognitive ergonomics because you know perception actually varies keeps on varying from person to person depending on the situation perception varies okay so per, uh, identifying the personal construct is very important in many cases so based on personal construct theory this methodology has three main stages first is the pool of artifacts and uh, need to be defined first first we need to identify those artifacts and we need to uh, define them triads are drawn from that particular tool uh, so majorly what we call it that three groups of artifacts so that's why triad okay then what we do as to state the differences and similarities between one and other two groups that comparison kind of thing we try to build then participants are asked to rate all artifacts against the construct and the matrix is analyzed so the last portion which is very important because here you need lot of practice lot of experience so um, normally what happens for this particular case understanding the data and interpreting the data depends on the skill or experience that you develop okay so participants what they are asked to rate all the artifacts okay so whatever artifacts they uh, we have gathered against the construct and a particular matrix is uh, need to be developed and need to be analyzed so this analysis is very very important and critical so the results provide a set of personal construct for product evaluation this process is uh, repeated with a large set of individuals and a large set of artifacts okay so it's a very this particular process can be done in iterative process okay one two three you can you can repeat okay then some common constructs are likely to emerge because when you keep on doing it something which is very common it comes up and then you have an idea that what kind of personal construct you are getting from it so this method is used to examine the different sort of construct that people hold and the level of artifacts classes so you get at the end kind of classifications okay so using that maybe you can take it further how the system need to be developed this is again very commonly used tool in in the field of design um, it's a focus groups uh, study so it is an extension of the individual interview so when we talk about individual interview it's a person one person and another person is taking interview however it is focus group so basically it is used in market research and product design and focus group people gather together to talk about particular individual and the collective reaction against a event to a particular event so it's not an individual it's a group of people who are connected to this particular event okay so here it is very important for us to understand who are our focus group so whenever we are doing a focus group study so sample selection is very very important and the criteria inclusion and exclusion criteria for this focus group sample is very important for us now as i mentioned today we will be discussing all in brief and from next class onwards each tool will be described in detail so let us go for the cognitive task analysis method so these methods are used for describing the knowledge and strategies required for task form performance okay 
Specially cognitive task analysis method are classified into four major categories. One is hierarchical task analysis. Many of us must have done already. Still, we will be learning this technique in detail. Allocation of function method, critical decision method and applied cognitive work analysis. So, brief description of hierarchical task analysis. It was initially developed in process to need for greater understanding of cognitive task. So, initially it was for that. However, this cognitive hierarchical task analysis, this is a very common tool which is being used in many other fields in current days. So, HTA, I think it is a printing mistake, HTA describes a system in terms of goal and sub goal with feedback loop in a nested hierarchy. So, hierarchy, so uh, we give some grading and we try to make a nest of it, right. This approach can be used to describe any system inherently flexible. It can be used to many ends, okay, from person specification to training requirements. So, we really do not know where the results can be used. Once we do an hierarchical task analysis with an object, it, it may happen, it lead you to some other direction as well and your study direction may change. So, this hierarchical task analysis, when we have certain things like, you know, step by step process we have to follow in that cases where the problems, where the interventions are required is very important for us to know and this hierarchical task analysis definitely give you a result. So, also it gives the error prediction. So, uh, we can really foresee that where that error can be. Okay, so when we draw an hierarchical task analysis chart or we can we create that particular tab table for hierarchical task analysis that we will discuss how to how to do that. So we will take a task and then we will practice it. When we do that, then what will happen? We will be able to predict the error that may possible to come and their designers has a big role that if we can predict that possible system error is going to happen, we may change the design process, we may change the design or may change the element of that particular design and we can avoid it beforehand. To team performance assessment, of course, if a particular task is, you know, performed by a particular group of people, you know, particular team, then how, how it is getting permanent, of which output is acting as an input to other, how these are connected, how they are creating a nest, we can understand that to a system design. Of course, it will finally help us to design the whole system with minimum error and uh, maximum productivity, okay, that we can expect from the hierarchical task analysis. Next part is cognitive allocation and functional methodology. Uh, of course, uh, it is an extension of HTA. Numerous approaches has been taken which develop from this uh, allocation of the system uh, sub goal which is there in HTA. In this method, four basic types of sub goal allocations are present. One, only human, second, only computer, third, shared by human in charge and uh, fourth one, shared but computer in charge, okay. So, somewhere the errors or problems or uh, the system is completely by human, completely by computer or the machines. Some cases shared with uh, the other counterpart like machine and human, uh, machine or computer, but main charge is taken by the human and the fourth one just opposite where computer are the major and however, there is a uh, no charge which is taken by the computer, okay. So, it is a shared thing, however, majorly done by the 
computer. So you can really start gathering information related to such type of system where only human is present, where only computer is present, where human computer both are present however human is dominating whereas in the next where computer is dominating it will try to get such such kind of examples and then if you do this cognitive allocation fun of function and uh, methodology maybe you can try to evaluate it it's a for your practice so each sub goals can be allocated depending upon the skills and technology so four criteria are applied the job satisfaction of a person how satisfied a person to that particular job the potential for human error so what are the things available in the system which are the potential causes for human error the potential effect on the situational awareness which is very very important because you if you are completely aware about the situation that is going to come maybe cognitively you are more powerful to handle that particular situation okay so so this is very important and the resource implication of the allocation the next uh, tool or technique uh, that we we are going to discuss is the critical decision method so for all of you i suggest today you will learn the basic things what are the varieties available so that we are learning and in the next class we will take each and every uh, not next one class or um, all other next classes what we will take every detailed techniques every techniques we will we'll detail it out okay so uh, starting from the steps starting from the first step second step and then how do we conclude the data okay we will do that so this is critical decision method it is an update and extension of the critical incident technique uh, it structures the interview in an incident analysis to review the critical decision points okay so it's very very important that we really understand that what are the critical decisions we need to take in a particular system when we are present when we are working okay so so it's it, it's it's a structure you need to follow to prepare that interview and we need to analyze that how these critical in uh, no decisions has been taken so uh, investi an investigation is done with detailing of the incident timeline and looking at the decision according to the timeline so if an event happen then how the event happen all timeline need to fill and where which decision has been taken so why that decision why that critical decision has been taken by the operator so this method will give you an understanding of all this so you know uh, um, it will help you to analyze the system thoroughly and it will give you a direction where the design interventions are really possible to enhance where are the ergonomics intervention are really possible to enhance the system performance and total productivity of the system so a series of questions are uh, presented to define each decision so mainly these are some you uh, know examples what information cues were attended to then what are the situation uh, uh, assessments were there what information was considered what so maybe there are n number of information but the decision maker has considered three or four why which one so all these queries are very important when we are talking about the critical decision method what options were considered so if there are four five options available to choose i have chosen a particular why why that options may, uh, i have chosen why i relied on that particular option so these analysis are very important okay so what goals were to be achieved so being the operator of that whole system uh, what i was going to 
um, achieve in that particular case. So, all these type of information, all these varieties of data, these are basically not information I will consider as you know data. Okay. So, these data will help uh, the researcher to get a direction that where the intervention points points and how do we improve the whole system after the intervention. So, this will lead you towards the intervention. So, the approach can be generated in you know of course, as I mentioned that it is a large amount of data, huge data set. Okay. So, so, the source the, this particular method will give you enormous data. Maybe in a particular uh, research study, we will not be able to handle so much. It needs, you know, two, three objective, more objectives uh, to handle such data. So, it is very, very important uh, tool. The questionnaire structure should help the analyst identify the conflicts and uh, contradiction between and the within interviews response. Okay, it is very, very important. So, we will be able to identify these conflicts and contradiction once we go through this critical decision method. Okay. The next is applied cognitive work analysis. It is also a very important and useful tool and frequently used tool. Very important thing is frequently, we uh, very frequently we use this particular tool. So, it is based on the analysis of demands and constraints that are inherent in that ta particular task domain. Okay. So, what demand we have and what are the constraints available okay, in that particular inherent task domain. So, it is based on the analysis of these two component. So, how I am fulfilling it, how I am going to achieve it. Okay. It has been used in process control and command and control environment. It is very important that when uh, there is a possibility to control the environment through some command. Okay. So, those cases this particular tool is being used. The aim of this methodology are to approach design holistically considering all aspects of the system, mainly structure, procedure, training program, automation, database design and sensor. Okay. So, it is a holistic approach as I mentioned very initially. So, it, it talks about demand, it talks about constraint. So, how do we manage them? How do we fulfill the objective of the uh, system in uh, you know taking consideration of all these things? So, this is very, very useful tool in that case and it says that it is an holistic approach. Then what will happen? We will be able to try to visualize the whole system together and we will be able to uh, understand where the interventions are possible. So, each and every tool, it is not only this particular tool, each and every tool basically gives you an understanding that where the interventions, intervention points are and if we do intervention, what will be the kind of impact? So, you can really visualize it. So, every tool, but however, all tools are not similar based on the objective of your research, you can choose any one of them. So, the basic steps that we follow over here is development of a functional uh, abstraction network, determining the cognitive work requirements, identifying information relationship requirement, representing design requirement and presenting the design concepts. So, these are the mis, uh, basic steps. So, design concepts till design concepts. So, it gives real indication where and how the designs can be possible. So, next part of this whole chapter will be the error analysis method. So, in this error analysis method, we will uh, we'll deal mainly two components. So, these method focus on the prediction of human error. So, till now, whatever we have done, we, we, we try to gather information from the system. Whereas, 
in error method again we will try to get information from the system however it is very much connected to the human performance okay so first one is sherpa uh, the full name of sherpa is systemic human error reduction and prediction approach um, in recent days many research studies basically use this particular tool uh, to get an understanding how the whole system is performing the next is task analysis for error identification again uh, kind of result we will be getting quite similar however the variables are different the results are little different and it gives you different indication so let us start with sherpa so what exactly it does it is a part based on human task analysis okay uh, so sherpa is used to analyze what can go wrong in task performance okay so what is possible way where we we uh, being an operator may go wrong okay so it may happen that uh, when we design a particular system we are expecting that uh, the system to perform a certain manner or certain way however if we go for this particular analysis we may predict that while following this process where the human may go wrong okay so again it's a prediction it's a prediction so when we do a prediction we can improve the system before we meet any accident okay so to prevent any hazard to prevent any accident we may analyze the system using sherpa at the core of sherpa is a task and error task taxonomy so we will giving different nomenclature different you know um, counting of those type of error so each task can be classified into five basic type uh, that we will be discussing so sherpa uses hierarchical task analysis with an error taxonomy to identify credible errors sherpa is used in control room task maintenance task transportation task and command and control task so these cases definitely we can use sherpa it's very clear uh, identification where we can use sherpa as a tool of tool to identify your error so if you have such situation definitely you can pick this particular tool to analyze your situation or analyze your error so it is a divergent error prediction method it works associating with 10 error method with each action every action associated with 10 error it is an over inclusive strategy to novice for selecting error method and the novice user like many of us when we start our research work we are really um, not really expert so for those cases play safe than uh, sorry approach like you know let us do it if we go wrong we can come back again redo it okay some kind of so if we are in that particular phase sherpa definitely will help you to get better data better uh, information okay so uh, sherpa definitely is a is an useful tool for any learner if they have cases like maintenance task control room task transportation task and command control task okay then next is task analysis for error identification so it is based upon a theory of human product interaction called rewritable routine very important very uh, commonly used term you know rewritable routine so if we are following a routine how do we rewrite and improve our performance it's it's very uh, you know um, general information however it's very scientific and we we coin this terminology to you know improve 
uh, to use as a tool and use as a data in in this uh, in this particular field so it's very very uh, important and again as i mentioned it's it it, it gives you a direction to uh, where you can start your intervention so that idea of rewritable uh, routine is transitory of course, <laughs> uh, it's, it's very important uh, either becoming completely overwrite or somewhere you modify. So, wherever you find uh, this is not really going to work, you rewrite it completely. Whereas, it may happen some parts are quite okay. Uh, you find uh, you, you the data says this is feasible, you keep them, whereas those parts are not feasible, you change and rewrite that particular portion. So, based on this theory, um, uh, this task analysis for error identification represents and analyzes the dialogue between people and product. So, this particular tool has two forms of output. First is predicted errors from human interaction with a particular device. So, when you are interacting, so what are the predicted error? And the second component, what you get as an output is a model of task flow based on the mapping human action onto state space diagram. Okay, it's very, very important in a, in a form of state space diagram so how the information is processing so it's a mapping of human action so the task flow model is used as a part of an analytical prototyping procedure to assess a virtual product so if you are creating a virtual product then you can do this particular task it is a convergent uh, error prediction technique this particular uh, method that task analysis for identification we call it TAFI this TAFI can be uh, and you know convergent error prediction technique so what it does identifying the possible transition here it's very important it's a possibility it's not the confirm okay there are possibilities. So, from these possibilities, you have to choose where exactly the interventions can be done. So, identifying the possible transition between the different state of a device uses the normative description of behavior to identify potentially erroneous action. So, here also we have a number of errors. Whereas, which one is more potential? So, we have to remove them, we have to rewrite them, right? So, uh, we really need to identify them and describe them and eliminate them. So, the novice do know prevent the individual generation too many false alarm. It may happen when you do not know, you are not aware situa in a, about that particular situation in a small error also you may raise a big alarm which is which may cause a problem to the whole system so this particular uh, method will help you to stop to such kind of action so this is very very important so before you go for in the in any kind of design intervention or ergonomics intervention this will help you to give a gradation that where exactly you should start it may not then each and every step the intervention is required somewhere you need to identify which one is more which one is less right so this will help you to do that the next is workload and situational analysis method so, again, let us understand what is mental workload, a multidimensional concept incorporating task and performance demand together with operator skill and attention. Okay? So, it is a multidimensional concept. It is a multidimensional concept. So, you know, from many dimension, we can really uh, try to understand what this particular situation is what this particular concept is. So, monthly dimensional concept incorporating task first is task and then performance demand. 
together how how the operators skill and attention is connected with the whole activity we need to understand that and then we analyze the mental workload so task design is challenged with keeping mental workload within a optimal performance zone where workload is neither too high or too low so here if workload goes too high then maybe there is an error there is a hazard there is a problem in the whole system if it is too low then again the similar uh, not similar but problem may happen so how do we optimize you know in my earlier course also i always try to or being a practitioner of ergonomics we always try to optimize the system so it's not about maximum it's not about always high it's all about how do we optimize our productivity in comparison with the input resources human health and all those things so here also basic concept is optimization okay optimization how do we optimize it so what if the workload is very high or workload is very low then definitely the total performance of the system the productivity of the system will fall right so how do we optimize it it is very very necessary so this tool will give you an direction the how do you do that so measures of mental workload primary and secondary task performance physiological measure and subjective measure so these are the components that you need to do in this particular case now workload and situational analysis method this is um, this is a topic which is you know emerging and uh, many system designer uh, many design practitioner many ergonomist industrial engineers really try to go for these tools nowadays and many research papers are coming out with the concept of this situational awareness and situational analysis method okay so we will have um, four major uh, area that we will be discussing here one is nasa task load index and situation awareness rating technique second is multiple resources time sharing model third is critical path analysis and finally situational an situational awareness global assessment technique these four types or four varieties we will be discussing so let us start with multiple resources time sharing model so this particular model based on wickens multiple resource theory okay see everything i will not be able to describe in this particular class however you should pick up these keywords like here wickens on multiple resource theory okay i will not be i do not have scope to discuss it here however you can you uh, know study yourself if you have question you can definitely come back to us okay so according to this particular theory there is more than one commodity in the human processing system that may be assigned resources like you no know, properties okay so allocation flexibility sharing and all those things so we need to understand in a system how these are being uh, placed okay once we understand then we can make the connections so the important of this particular relationship in this particular model are mainly three direction so two task require separate attentional resources and they will be uh, time shared efficiently so maybe we identify two so two task where it the time you know equally or time shared by them and they may need separate att attentional resources whereas two task require common attentional somewhere separate somewhere it is common the performance on the task will depend on the resource 
allocation whatever resources is being allocated by the system based on that you may decide and when additional resources are needed for the performance the uh, performance the task difficulty is increased so if additional resources are there uh, to enhance that particular performance definitely there will be an uh, increased difficulty in that particular task. So, we may get this information. So, it predicts the workload in situation where multiple tasks are performed concurrently. Okay? So, multiple tasks are performed concurrently. So, we may predict the workload in such situation using this particular method. So, this model distinguishes between perceptual modalities, processing stages, processing codes, and responses. So, three things perceptual modalities, what it does, this particular model distinguishes between the perce perceptual modalities, processing stages, processing codes, and responses. Okay. So, how these things are connected? So, it is basically establishing the relationship, establishing the connection between each. It can be used for heuristic and computational evaluation. Next that we are going to do is the multimodal critical path analysis. What it is? Definitely we will discuss in detail. However, here it is a small description. So, CPA is based in project management literature. So, you know it is not very commonly used tool in design. However, nowadays in the field of design management, in the field of industrial management, we use this particular tool. Whereas, multi, uh, it is a multimodality of people is based in a human factors literature. Okay. So, uh, if, we, if we go back to to earlier days where you know uh, human factors are described in different way and the way how we define we may get an input for this particular tool. So, traditional method for uh, modeling the human responses time not responding to the multimodality. So, this MMCPA why we say, say it multimodal ok critic actually it is a critical path analysis basically it is a critical path analysis method however as as this this is very specific to the multimodal because you know nowadays systems are like this. So, multimodal critical path analysis uses the approach of multimodality to model task time with uh, claims for greater accuracy ok. So, uh, we want to achieve the level of accuracy you know very fine system. So, those cases it is important. If two or more tasks occupied the same modality then they must be performed in series. So, these information so which one to be performed after which like you know the sequence uh, specification how do we do that. So, using this type of analysis this type of tool we may get an idea. But if if two or more tasks occupy different modalities, they could be performed in parallel. So, if the whole system need to be built, what are the things can be done in sequence? What are the information, what are the process to be done in parallel? How do we decide? So, the whole system flow, you no know, uh, designing this whole management, so system, service, for all those cases, this MMCPA is very, very multimodal uh, critical path analysis is very, very uh, you know, helpful. So, it actually help us to save the whole execution time. It, it help us to understand the uh, you know, um, interactions between the activities which is happening in the system. Also, it help us to understand where the possible errors come, where are the possible error, the sources of error. Okay. So, th using this tool, we can get all this information. So, when it is a requirement to design the whole system, this type of tool is definitely a big help. Then is situational awareness global assessment technique. Again, it takes information, it takes data from 
uh, few of the earlier tools that we discussed. So, this method presents recall probe questions when the task is interrupted to measure the awareness. It measures three levels of awareness. First is perception of element, very important, you know. If we do not perceive the elements, whatever present in our workstation, in our workplace, it becomes very difficult for someone to react on it, right? So, how I am perceiving the elements present in the workstation, each and everything, how I am perceiving it, how I am getting influenced of it, it's, it's very, very important. So, and it keeps on varying person to person, position to position, situation to situation. The same light source can have different impact when we are in different situation. So, how do we perceive, how it help us to take this critical decision? So, these, this particular process will help us to understand that. The, then comprehension of the situation, how I am comprehending that particular situation in a particular cases, okay? And then prediction of the future status. Of course, my decision will help to act something and how do I predict and how do I act because my prediction will lead me to the op the lead me means I mean to say the operator lead the operator to take some action right. So, here it, it is very very important how they are perceiving the element, how they are comprehending that particular situation and how they are force how they foresee the situation how they uh, take the status ahead okay so the recall probes are developed using the hta type technique to elicit the operator's goal questions at each awareness level can be developed because you know it has different stage so you can really develop uh, one set, two three four something like that this method also can be used in aviation uh, questions about the perceptions of elements and all those things so air speed altitude fuel state. so basically you know when there is an air accident so how and why it happened so it may have sequential error. So, how do we analyze it and how the design can prevent such incident further? So, this type of tool will give you such data. So, this is very, very useful in many critical situations. So, it is not, not only aviation industry, in many industries where lot of parallel informations and uh, cross connecting informations are going on and it is going to affect the system for those cases these type of tools are very very helpful so you know it's an what i can say it's a overall chart that you can see uh, it's a just a, a data representation that where and how you can use them what is possible possibilities so using this particular form you can may choose which one is useful for your objective and uh, which one to be choose to fulfill your object. So, this is just a representation of that you can use um, for your own, but it is not only this apart from the based on your specific objective, you can have some changes here and there. It's, it's, it's not only fixed, okay, you can have your own modification, but this is basic this you can use it okay so uh, today i would like to conclude uh, with all these uh, tools that we are going to discuss uh, already discussed today however each and every tool will be discussing in detail in further classes so already i think i mentioned always that you know uh, Although somebody is telling this tool is beneficial for this, this tool is beneficial for that, uh, this technique we should use for this, this technique can be used for that. However, it is absolutely the researcher's decision that which tool to be chosen because the researcher is the only owner of his or her objectives. So, based on his or her objectives, what data or what deliverable they are visualizing based on that they can pick the tools and techniques 
uh, available in the literature okay so uh, from whatever tools i have discussed till now you can use any one of them or in combination based on your objectives okay so in from the next class onwards what we will do will go for the detailing so starting from the history uh, majorly and then how do we collect data how do we analyze the data and what can be the possible interpretation of such data if possible in some cases i will give some example which i have uh, with me then you may practice it uh, at your end and if you have any question or any query definitely you can discuss it in the discussion board or in the you know interaction session thank you for today mm -hmm.